Okay, we're going to look at simple harmonic motion now. Currently this isn't in the HSC syllabus, but it is important to have a good understanding of this to really properly understand how waves work. As a wave passes through a medium, the particles making up the medium undergo simple harmonic motion. And in fact, we need something undergoing simple harmonic motion in order to generate a sinusoidal wave, which is the main type of wave that we will be considering. So simple harmonic motion is a special type of motion where there's a force causing the motion and that force is proportional to the distance from equilibrium and it's directed back towards the equilibrium. So an example of such a force is described by Hooke's law. Hooke's law describes how a spring moves and the force on the spring is given by F is equal to minus Kx. Now in this equation F stands for the force which is measured in newtons, K is the spring constant so that's how tight the spring is. A really tight spring that's really hard to extend is going to have a high spring constant whereas a looser spring will have a much lower spring constant. And X is the distance of the particle from equilibrium. So the minus sign is important in this equation because it indicates that that motion is back towards that equilibrium point. So a mass on a spring such as this one is a nice example of simple harmonic motion. That's because this spring obeys Hooke's law. So when I move the spring away from the equilibrium position, like extending this mass downwards, there's now a force from the spring upwards as it tries to contract and that force is proportional to the distance from that equilibrium position. Likewise, if I move it up above the equilibrium position, there's a force back down pushing it to try and get back to that equilibrium position. So as the spring goes, it experiences the largest forces furthest from its equilibrium position and those forces are back towards the equilibrium position and proportional to the distance from the equilibrium position. So as a result, when this mass oscillates, it undergoes simple harmonic motion. Okay, now we're going to be looking at mechanics in a lot more detail in the next course. But for, for now, I'm going to assume that you know Newton's second law. So Newton's second law, you've probably seen written as F equals MA, and it just tells us that the net force is equal to the mass times the acceleration of the object in that system. I'm also going to assume that you know that the velocity is the rate of change of the displacement. So if we want to write this mathematically, we can write V is equal to dx dt. And I'll assume that you know that the acceleration is equal to the rate of change of the velocity. So we can write that as A is equal to dV dt. So now that we've seen Hooke's law and assuming that we know Newton's second law, we can write F is equal to minus Kx, which is equal to Ma. And we can give our A a little subscript x, which just shows that that acceleration is in the x direction. So we can rearrange this to get an expression for the acceleration of the um, mass on the end of that spring. And this gives us that the acceleration is equal to minus k on m x. Now that acceleration is actually maximum when x is maximum. And for an object undergoing simple harmonic motion, the maximum displacement is known as the amplitude. So you've heard of the amplitude before in waves and this is exactly the same amplitude because the wave is making the particles undergo the simple harmonic motion and so in that case the maximum displacement from equilibrium was given by the amplitude A and it's exactly the same in this case here. So the maximum acceleration for a particle is given by K on M times A.